Now, a question that we all need to ponder sometimes. Why do I do the things that I do? Why have I chosen to make my life take the direction that it has? Why have I chosen to occupy myself in the way that I have? Can you even answer the question, why? For instance, if it had to do with your career, why did you choose the specific career path that you did? And is there a purpose behind it? Can you answer the question, why? Some can, but many can't. It's a question that, if you've ever spent much time around small children, it's the question that at some point they all go through the phase of they ask that same question. And it doesn't matter what the subject matter is. The question is always, why? You need to go to bed. Why do I need to go to bed? Or, Dad, why do you have to go to work? It doesn't matter what it is. Why is always the question. And eventually you get to the point, I don't know how to answer why, it's go ask your mom. <laughs> it's a question that kids like to ask. But you know, it would do us some good as adults if we would ask that same thing of ourselves. Why? Why do I do the things that I do? Why have I chosen to take the direction that I have? Is there a purpose behind it? And is what I'm doing going to lead me to where I ultimately want to be? Two weeks ago, we looked at something of a purpose statement of Jesus out of Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Why did He come? On a rescue mission. Because He wants fellowship with those who are lost. He wants fellowship with those who have gotten themselves into trouble and they need a way out of sin. He came to save us. And this week we're going to look at a passage that can serve as something of a purpose statement for the Apostle Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 to 23, and a little further on, we'll look at, at a little bit more of that further down from there. But we see that Paul was a man of purpose. And you see this all the way through his ministry. He was willing to change whatever was necessary because he had a purpose. And if what he was doing didn't fit with that purpose, he changed it. He had a laser focus on why. He knew why. And we're going to look at the fact that Paul had purpose. And we're going to notice a few things about his life and his ministry. And specifically, we'll see them coming out in this. But because Paul had a purpose, he understood why he existed. He understood why he was doing what he was doing. It made it to the point that Paul was willing to sacrifice. Because you see, when we understand purpose, when we understand why we do what we do, we're willing to set other things aside. Sometimes big things. We're willing to sacrifice for it. But as was read for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we see something of Paul's purpose. And we see that he was willing to sacrifice for that purpose. And we see that he was willing to sacrifice several things. He was willing to sacrifice his preferences and the things that he had learned from his past. Let's go to Galatians chapter 1. We'll make our way back to 1 Corinthians in a moment, but uh, we'll see how this relates. But in Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 to 14, Paul said, I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. And so we see the foundation of Paul's beliefs. We see the foundation of his purpose is that the message he had didn't come from a man. It didn't come from someone that made it up. It came from God himself. It came from Jesus Christ. And so as a result, when you get to verses 13 and 14, he said, You've heard of my former manner of life in Judaism. How I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen being more extremely zealous for my ancestral traditions. He had an incredible zeal for the tradition, for his culture, for his belief system. And as you look at what was going on with Paul, the fact that he had the resources and the ability to travel to foreign cities to go try to put an end to the church, it says that he had a level of prominence as well. Why would he change that? Why would he give all of that up? 
It says, because what I preach doesn't come from man. He was willing to sacrifice his past. He was willing to sacrifice maybe his preferences on a lot of cultural things. Willing to sacrifice his traditions for what was more important. There was purpose. And when we understand the purpose, we're willing to give up what doesn't fit with it. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 9 again. And I want to look a little more closely at a few of the verses that were just read for us. 1 Corinthians 9 Verses 19, 20, and 21. As we look at what he sacrificed there, he says, For though I'm free of all men, I've made myself a slave to all men. Verse 20, to the Jews I became as a Jew. Verse 21, he says, to those who are without law, he became as one without law. A slave to all men. Or like a Jew. Or like a Gentile, depending on the situation. Now, especially that third one, that he became as one without law, in order to be able to win those without law. Think about how hard that would have been for someone who was a Pharisee. When he walks in and he's trying to and he's trying to convert this a Gentile family, a group of Gentiles, and he's sitting there having fellowship with them. And, you know, a big part of fellowship in that day was table fellowship, and one of them says, do you want a bacon sandwich? Think about the difficulty culturally. Now he knows it's, I mean, we see from the writings of Paul, he knows what's right, he knows what's wrong, he knows that there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. But everything from his past, I can't have that. To those without law, I became as without law. He was willing to sacrifice because he had purpose. He understood why he was doing what he was doing. He understood why he was communicating, why he was having fellowship with, why he would sit across the table with, why he would go into the homes of Gentiles because there was purpose and he was willing to sacrifice his culture. He was willing to sacrifice his tradition. He was willing to sacrifice his comfort because he had purpose. When we look at that past, he was willing to sacrifice. You see over in Philippians chapter 3, he gives us something of his resume from his past here. In Philippians 3, 4, 5, and 6, he says, Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I have far more. He said, if somebody can boast about being a Jew, if somebody can boast about their pedigree, if somebody can say, look how great I am from the standpoint of a uh, of the flesh from the standpoint of Judaism, he says, they don't have anything on me. Verse 5, circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, which is in the law found blameless. He says they're a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was the best of the best. He graduated at the top of his class. He could boast. If anybody else could boast, Paul says, oh, I've got you beat. And he could give his, his resume line by line, and he could put anybody to shame. And he says, later on, and we'll read in a few minutes, we'll see that he gave all that up. He was a success by Jewish standards with nothing to gain but persecution and hardship for turning to Christ. He turned to Christ anyway. And we see exactly what he traded it for in 2 Corinthians 11. Paul gives quite the list of things that he faced for coming to Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11, beginning in verse 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I speak as if insane. I am more so. In four more labors and four more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death, five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. 
Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've spent in the deep. I've been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. I've been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. Apart from such external things, there's the daily pressure of me on concern for all the churches. Who is weak without my being weak? Who's led into sin without my intense concern? He talks there about the hardships that he's faced, and you think about his past in Judaism. He had the resources, he had the means, he had the prominence to be able to travel around to try to put an end to the church. He gave all that up to go hungry. He gave all that up to be drug out of Lystra and stoned and left for dead. He gave all that up. We go back to Philippians 3 and keep reading. See, he gave all that up because he had purpose. Philippians 3, beginning in verse 7, he says, But whatever things were gained to me, what was gain? All those things he could boast about in the, that previous section we read a moment ago in Philippians 3, all those things that were gained to me, whatever was gained to me, those things I've counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish that I may gain Christ. It may be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformed to His death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead." Notice he says there, he gave it all up. He traded it all in to know Jesus. He said, I traded it all in for the surpassing value of knowing Jesus. You think about in society the value of being able to list off the things and boast about the things that Paul did as a Jew. That had value. He traded it all in to be persecuted. He traded it all in to go hungry. He traded it all in to be imprisoned. He traded it in to be stoned. He traded it in to be hated. Because knowing Jesus is more valuable. He understood why. He understood his purpose. And as a result, when we understand purpose, we're willing to sacrifice. We're willing to give up. We're willing to pay whatever it takes. Because it's just that important. Paul was willing to sacrifice, but if we keep looking at this passage, we find that he had a focus. He was willing to sacrifice and he was focused it had a specific point. He didn't sacrifice for the sake of sacrificing. He sacrificed, as we see, so that he could know Christ. But also that he might bring others to him as well. He had a focus unlike any other. He wanted as much as anyone ever has to do what God wants. Now if you look at his past, before becoming a Christian, you see that same that same determination, that same focus. As Paul retells some of his past in Acts 26, we see that. And so the fact that he was focused on trying to do what was right never changed. It was just his understanding that did. So in Acts 26, verses 9 through 11, he said, So then I thought to myself that I had to do many things hostile to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And this is just what I did in Jerusalem. Not only did I lock up many of the saints in prisons, having received authority from the chief priests, but also when they were being put to death, I cast my vote against them. And as I punished them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And being infuriously enraged at them, I kept pursuing them even to foreign cities. He had prominence. He had authority. He had the resources to travel. Because he was focused on doing at the time what he thought was right. And it was while he was in the middle of one of those campaigns to go and try to put an end to the church that he learned that what he thought was right wasn't quite so right. His focus never changed, but he learned the truth. And so his direction changed drastically. Let's go back again to 1 Corinthians 9. We talked a moment ago about the sacrifice that he made, that he became as 
To the Jew, he became as the Jew. To those without the law, he became as without law. He made himself a slave to all. He met people where they were at. He sacrificed, gave up comfort, gave up tradition, gave up what he would prefer. Why? 1 Corinthians 9, verse 20. To the Jews I became as a Jew. Why? So that I may win the Jews. Verse 21. To those who are without law as without law. Why? It says they're not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ. So that I might win those who are without law. Verse 22. He sums this up. To the weak I became weak that I might win the weak and become all things to all men, so that I may by all means save some. His focus throughout His ministry. By all means, He says, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. He has one focus, one goal, one purpose. Salvation for as many people as possible, to bring people to Jesus Christ. He said, I gave up everything for the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. And he says, I'll do anything, I'll go by all means, by any means, I'll do whatever it takes so that more people can know Him. He had a focus. And this defines Him throughout Scripture, throughout His ministry. In Romans chapter 15, he requested support. He said, when I finished, after he's visited Rome, his intent was, you're going to support me as I go on to preach in Spain. He asked the Ephesians for prayers about his preaching. He requested the Colossians for prayers concerning his preaching, concerning his opportunity to be able to share the good news. You see that in multiple of his letters. Pray for opportunities. Pray that a door will be open. Pray that I'll speak boldly. Pray that I can make it plain. Pray that I can preach Jesus. He was focused. And you see that defining his entire ministry. The one that I find really remarkable is there in Philippians chapter 1. In Philippians chapter 1, beginning in verse 12. You know, there wasn't really anything that anybody could do to make him be quiet. Let's get him arrested. He said, okay, I'll preach to the guards. Now, I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel, so that in my imprisonment, the cause of Christ has become well known throughout the whole Praetorian Guard and to everyone else. The whole guard knows about Jesus now. The most of the brethren, trusting in the Lord because of my imprisonment, have far more courage to speak the word of God without fear. Some, to be sure, are preaching Christ from envy and strife, but some from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, rather from pure motives, rather than thinking to cause me distress in my imprisonment. Verse 18, notice, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed... And this man who is sitting in a Roman prison, chained to a guard, unable to travel as he pleases, unable to do what he pleases, doesn't have his freedom, he says, in this I rejoice. Paul had a focus. If he was free, he traveled around to the different cities, different places, and he said, I'll talk to anybody, Jew or Gentile, whoever I have opportunity about Jesus. If they put me in prison, guess what? There's a guard sitting next to me. i got a captive audience. The cause of Christ has become well known throughout the whole Praetorian Guard. Paul had a focus and he didn't allow anything to get in the way. But you know, as we see Paul being a man of purpose, we see he was willing because he understood his purpose. He understood why. He was willing to sacrifice. He was focused on bringing others to him. You know, it wasn't enough for Paul to just give things up to be able to preach. It wasn't enough for him to say, do as I say. He practiced what he preached. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 again. He 
practiced what he preached. And we're going to read a little bit further on in the text in 1 Corinthians 9. Beginning in verse 23, he says, I do all things. I do all things for the sake of the gospel so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore I run in such a way not as without aim. I box in such a way not as beating the air, but I discipline my body that I make it my slave, so that after I've preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Paul is saying here effectively, a sermon's not worth much if the one who's preaching it doesn't believe it. If he doesn't believe it enough to at least do his best to live it out. It's empty. And Paul says if after preaching, he says, I don't want to be disqualified. So he disciplines himself. He preaches transformation and it says here, I discipline myself. He doesn't want to be disqualified. He preaches faith and he's willing to take risks because of his faith in Jesus. He preaches repentance and was willing to completely turn his life around whenever he was met on the road to Damascus by Jesus. He preaches that others should repent. Well, why should we listen to Paul? Look what he gave up. Look at the change he made. He practices what he preaches. A couple of chapters over in 1 Corinthians 11. He said, be imitators of me, just as I also am of Christ. Paul lived out what he preached because he's a man of purpose to the point that he could not just say to his readers, listen and do what I say. He says, look at my life and follow me as I follow Christ. It wasn't just a message. It wasn't just something that he said. It was something that he lived out to the best of his ability. And he called on his readers not just to listen to his words, but to imitate his character, to imitate his priorities, to imitate his life. His message is all about knowing Christ. We see Paul as a man of purpose. He gave up everything for the surpassing value of knowing Christ. And he says, and I'll do anything to bring others to know him too. What's your purpose? Why do you do what you do? Maybe another question to ponder, why do you choose to be here? Have you thought about it? What lies under that? Is it, well, I do it because it's what I've always done. But that's not a purpose. That's a habit. What's the purpose? What's the purpose in your life? Why do you choose to do the things that you do? And are you using the things that you do to fulfill God's purpose for your life? To know Him better and to bring others to Him? We see Paul was a man of purpose. He used every opportunity, every venue, every chance he could to bring others to Christ. But what about you? Is your purpose aligned with God's purpose for you and for His creation? We're going to sing an invitation song in just a moment. And you have the opportunity this morning to make the decision that you're going to fulfill the purpose that God has for you. Ultimately, to be in fellowship with Him, to know Him. If you're not a child of God, you have the opportunity this morning to be in fellowship with God, to leave here with a relationship with God through Christ. Christ came to this world with purpose. To seek and save the lost. Paul went preaching with purpose. Do anything that it takes to bring others to know Christ. You have opportunity this morning to fulfill God's purpose for you to know Him. If you'll turn away from your sins and be united with Jesus in the waters of baptism. You can become God's child. 
Or this morning, if as a Christian, maybe you've been focusing on other things. Maybe you've made your purpose about something other than Christ. You have opportunity this morning to recommit, to make the necessary changes, to align your purpose with the purpose that God has for you. And if we can assist you in that, we invite you to come right now. All together we stand and sing.